The epic space race started in the 1950s when the United States and the Soviet Union expanded their intense rivalry into space. The goal of both sides was to control space. To increase the strength of the nation's scientific power, groundbreaking work had to be done. Everyone is aware of the race to be the first to put a satellite into orbit and how the Soviet Union with its first spacecraft lost the contest. Yuri Gagarin, the first human in space, was a citizen of the Soviet Union. Of course, people all across the world are still aware of the battle for the first manned mission to the moon. The United States could finally see itself as the victor when Poland 11 touched down on the moon in 1969 and Neil Armstrong took his illustrious step for humanity. Another intriguing pattern was also taken into consideration in these space competitions. Venus had likewise been thoroughly researched. Even using probes, the Soviet Union was able to take pictures of the planet's surface. Please click the thumbs up button if you want to take off with us and explore the furthest reaches of space. Start the journey now. Venus Observation History Venus has long been given special attention because it has been recognized as the brightest planet in the firmament from prehistoric times. Venus has always played a significant role in the observations of the sky made by all ancient societies, whether they were Maya, Mesopotamian, or Greek. Galileo Galilei made the first observations of Venus in many phases and their motion. Over the years, observational capabilities have improved, making it feasible to record a variety of Venus phenomena, such as Venus's transit in front of the Sun. But despite all of this study, people's curiosity remained unsatisfied. It should come as no surprise that both the Soviets and Americans dispatched expeditions to Venus in order to examine the planet with space probes. The original Venus probe. The Soviet Union launched Venera 1, their first umbrella, towards Venus as early as 1961, but the mission was deemed unsuccessful since it lost touch with Earth too soon. However, this umbrella is the first object to be recognized as a spacecraft because it met all the requirements, including solar thrust and course adjustment capacity. However, Americans and the Marina P2 probe gathered the first information about Venus. The planet's atmosphere is shown to be roughly 500 degrees Celsius in temperature. Venus 3 was the first probe to reach the planet's surface, but it crashed upon touchdown and was unable to relay any data. The following Venus probes were able to send data from Venus' atmosphere, but were unable to touch down on the planet's surface. Venus's first successful probe landing December 1970 marked the ideal moment. On Venus, the Soviet spacecraft Venera 7 ate a successful intended landing. For 23 minutes, communication with Earth was maintained. Venera 8 was also able to gather crucial information. The temperature of the planet's surface was 455 degrees Celsius. Additionally, profiles of the air pressure and other variables were made. It was even feasible to detect evidence of clouds on Venus using the photometer. Though Venus could still not be seen, the gamma-ray spectrometer could be used to determine the makeup of the planet's crust. The first Venus photograph the Venera 9 probe orbited Venus on October 22, 1975. The first man-made satellite to orbit an extraterrestrial planet included a camera and a spectrometer. Photographs of the rocky environment were captured. On Venus, clouds are said to be arranged in three layers that are stacked on top of one another. Even a digital video was sent to Earth. It had six bits per pixel, which seems absurd in modern times. Only a few photos might truly transmit useful information due to inadequate data density and transmission. Even Brown University's subsequent video processing couldn't significantly raise the caliber. The Venus 10 probe touched down on Venus at roughly the same time. It also sent panoramic photographs, even when one of the cameras wasn't working properly. Images in color of Venus, the Soviet probes Venera 11 and Venera 12 had color cameras on board. On Venus, they set foot in December 1978. However, it was unable to produce and send color images. The tremendous atmospheric pressure was too much for the cameras to handle, and they ceased functioning. There was a great deal of optimism that the Venus 13 and Venus 14 probes would return with color images. In fact, Venus 13 was able to function on the surface of the far-off planet for an amazing 127 minutes. Given the extremely challenging circumstances there, it was a tiny miracle. Then it was able to send back to Earth color photos and X-ray fluorescence images. These pictures allowed us a far better understanding of the conditions on Venus' surface. For more than 50 minutes, the Venus 14 umbrella was able to send data back to Earth. It not only took pictures, but it also looked at Venus' seismic activity. Surprisingly, there was quick proof of such action. Sent to Venus. 
probes later in 1984, the Soviet Union launched the Vega-1 and Vega-2 probes for a visit to Venus. They had helium balloons and a landing apparatus, which made it possible to monitor Venus' atmosphere for a longer period of time. Air pressure, temperature, cloud density, and wind speed could all be examined. Additional information regarding the planet's crust was found after the two probes touched down. Because the probes lacked cameras, no pictures were captured during these landings. Landings on Venus stopped after it. Large areas of Venus were mapped by the Soviet stations Venera 15 and Venera 16, which solely orbited the planet. The American probe Magellan completed the same task. Another probe was dispatched to Venus in 2006. The European Space Agency launched the Venus Express. Up until 2014, information about the planet's orbit was gathered. It became possible to demonstrate that Venus once had oceans and that its atmosphere contained hydroxyl. At first, the Japanese probe Ekatsuki was unable to orbit Venus as intended. Only after numerous adjustments was the objective finally accomplished. Several investigations are being carried out by the probe right now to look for volcanic activity on Venus. Future Exploration Ideas for Venus As part of a unique partnership between the United States and Russia, the Venera D project is being planned. It was originally supposed to start in 2003, but after multiple delays, it will probably likely start between 2026 and 2031. With a powerful radar, the entire surface of Venus is intended to be scanned. The probe will also be equipped with a landing system, and it will then use wheels to travel around the planet's surface. India also intends to launch a probe into Venus orbit. Although money is currently lacking, the Shukrajan 1 project could start in 2023. The Outcomes of Space Competition The Soviet Union undoubtedly prevailed in the race to Venus. The first probe to successfully communicate with Earth was launched into space by the United States. But Soviet probes made the first successful landing on Venus and captured the only known images of the planet's surface. However, due to the Cold War and the Soviet Union's refusal to share its data with other countries, Venus investigation was unnecessarily postponed for a very long time. Scientists from many nations have just recently been able to examine and analyze Soviet data as well as images. However, more comprehensive information about Venus, its surface atmosphere, and the general environment is now available in addition to the data collected by the U.S. or European satellite agencies. But we still don't know much about this strange world. We might be interested to discover what other regions orbiting or perhaps setting foot on Venus can learn interesting things. Conclusions It was really fascinating to see the contest with Venus. In those days, the Soviet Union was able to take pictures of the planet's surface. The public was unaware of these space missions, as well as Venus planets, and ongoing research that would eventually yield amazing findings. What are your thoughts on the Venus exploration, the data, and the images, and most importantly, what do you think the future may hold? We're genuinely curious about what you think. Why not start some interesting discussions by writing to us about it in the comments section?